I have a 2017 Tesla Model S here. The proximity sensors or the proximity system is not working here. I have an error display because most likely one of these sensors have failed. Let's hook the scan tool up and figure out what's going on. As you see here, we have a parking assist unavailable message. So I put the vehicle into a service mode and I brought up all the service alerts here. As you see here, we definitely have a parking assist failure here. Almost every 2014 and higher Model S I've gotten in has leaking screens. This one too is another leaking screen here. As you can see the bubble down the screen. Be very careful if you're buying a used Tesla, look at the screens and see if they're leaking because these are an expensive fix. We get to play with the new tool. So make sure you plug it in an OBD2 port. Let's check out the new scan tool. Make sure you plug the VCI in, which is pretty cool. This VCI communicates with every electric vehicle or hybrid vehicle. And you're going to want to come over here to Tesla. And we're going to automatically read the VIN here. Let's do an auto scan on the vehicle, which will tell me anything that's wrong with the vehicle. As you see, it's going through all the modules in the system, just like any other vehicle. Our Tesla is no different. They all need maintenance and they all need work. You see here, no fault code came back for the driver's assist. So let's enter it and find out what's going on with the data here. What's going on here is I see data here at 819 degrees negative, which is definitely a problem. And the vehicle is short to battery and has a parking assist failure due to that. There's only one reason for that. This vehicle is either in an accident or the wiring harness is broken. Let's go check it out. There's one last test I want to do because the module might be burned up here and we're going to perform a hard reset. The hard reset in the vehicle should reset the module here. And let's see, we still have a parking assist. After speaking to the customer, I figured out that the vehicle was in an accident. The front bumper is going to have to come off the vehicle. Well, it looks like I got to take the bumper off. We got to find the broken wire. To take the bumper off, you're going to want to open the hood. And you want to come over here and take this seal up. Come around work the seal up all the way around. Be careful not to rip it. Next you're going to want to pull this cover here up and disconnect the sensor here and light. Next you're going to want to remove this cover. Next you're going to want to remove the carpet like so. You're going to want to take the side piece carpet out also. And the same here. Now we're going to remove the plastic. You're going to want to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten millimeter bolts out and nuts. After removing the ten millimeter nuts and bolts, you're going to want to wiggle this out. Next, you're going to want to take one, two, three, four 13 millimeter bolts and one two 10 millimeter bolts out you now want to come over and remove this cover here it just pops up like so on one side and then you come over here and you pop it up you're going to want to take this side cover off here and this side cover off here and to do so you just want to wiggle it out like this and the same here with this one you want to come over and 
pop it up. Now have this plastic piece here. You're going to want to take these little plastic rivets out here and here. After removing the rivets, the covers just should just pop up like this and like this. You can now remove the center tray here. Out of the vehicle. With everything exposed, I can now test the wiring for the parking sensors on the vehicle. I have to remove the bumper now. I had to remove all that to get at these bolts here and here and here and here to remove the bumper. On the left side of the fender, there's a T25 screw, and on the right side of the fender, there's a T25 screw. And this is approximately right here. After removing the T25, the bumper can pull back here. And the same thing on the right side, the bumper cover will just pull off after removing that T25 screw. You're now going to want to raise the Tesla in the air or jack it up. Then is I have to remove these rivets here, all the way down, take the bumper off. At this point, the bumper itself will almost slide back freely now. Before, before removing the bumper, you're going to want to come over to this plug here. And you're going to want to unplug this plug on this side because it plugs the whole bumper in. Pull the bumper back slightly and then pull the wiring harness cable out. You should now be able to pull off the bumper without hurting anything. Well, with the bumper off, I was able to test both sides of the wiring harness and I came to the conclusion that this vehicle definitely wasn't an accident. The proximity sensor here was glued in due to the accident and the bracket broke. And then on this side, the proximity sensor was cracked in half also, continuity through the wires here, this wire here has no continuity and has a break in it. I have to repair that and that should fix the vehicle. We now know what's wrong with this Tesla. I'm going to repair the wiring and order the sensor. That should fix the vehicle. I will give you an update video when I make those repairs. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, Please like and subscribe.